the gnosis, esoteric knowledge of the seed. There is a perfect pre-existent eon dwelling in the invisible and unnameable elevations. This is pre-beginning and forefather in depth. He is uncontainable and invisible, eternal, ungenerated, in a quiet and deep solitude for infinite eons. With him is thought, which is called grace and silence. Once upon a time, depth thought of emitting itself a beginning of all, like a seed, and he deposited this projected emission as in a womb in that silence who is with him. Silence received this seed and became pregnant and bore mind, which is resembled and equal to him who admitted him. Mind alone comprehends the magnitude of his father. He is called only begotten and father and beginning of all. Along with him, truth was emitted. Now, the Gnosis is another word for wisdom or knowledge. The Gnostics and the Kabbalists use different terminology to explain cosmology, creation, or the birth of the universe. Depth is what most of you know as source, referred to by the Gnostics as the forefather, the ineffable, but not to be mistaken with the father. The Kabbalists call the same depth, Ein Sof, translated as no thing, different terminology, but still identifying the source of all. It is the catalyst or the source of creation, infinite creation, because we cannot conceive or even begin to understand its existence. For anyone to ask of the beginning of existence is to ask of existence before existence. Depth, which is the source, more commonly known as the ineffable or the Ein Sof, translated as no thing, means you don't know and cannot know. To our infinite mind, its light to us is darkness. You can only learn its operations through its creations, manifestations, and the law through which these things are created. Now depth used thought which was with it, meaning it was part of its makeup. Depth used thought to create a beginning, a eon, not the beginning in terms of existence. There is no beginning and there is no end. It cannot be conceived by our finite minds. Depth used thought, then emitted light. This light emission is the seed. This light or seed was emitted into silence, which is the womb. And from the womb was birthed the mind. This mind is what most of you call the father, who the Kabbalists call Keith or the crown. There are various references to this crown in your Bible. This mind, this Keith or, or better yet known as father, took on the image of the source or the forefather, meaning all potentiality for creation was with it, male and female in union, but unmanifested. The father born from the source, symbolized by the number one, would emit truth, which is the law. And the law set the foundation for creation and formation, and ultimately physical manifestation, or as the Kabbalists say, Malkuth, the world, the cosmos. Psalms 119, 142, thy righteous is everlasting righteousness, and thy law is the truth. Now I won't go any deeper into this because it is so layered and we would spend another month peeling away the various levels of this truth. But in order to justify the necessary union or reunion between active and passive, male and female, internally and externally, we must first touch on the Visica Pisces, the birthing from the womb. To understand the womb or the birthing from the womb below, we must first look at the original, the womb of all creation. Why? Correspondence. As above, so below. Matthew 6 and 10. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. The heavens are fixed in law, not so with man. Man and women are wicked in their fallen state. It is hard to get the truth from us who are the reflection below because we are not fixed and will deviate from law because of our free will. We will use ego to veil the truth for leverage or position. It is either team man or team woman. Not so much team truth, wisdom, and knowledge. Some of you debate which sex came first, not for the purpose of knowledge, but for power, rulership, dominance of the other sex, or to jockey for position. That alone tells me what point you have reached in your process of regeneration. And for that, I have no time. It is irrelevant because all truth declares the original man was man and woman. Duad two in a monad one, active and passive in one vessel. We don't have any documents or scripture to confirm the exact appearance if it looked like a man or a woman today or a combination of both physically. But the original man or prototype of man and woman today is classified as a duad in a monad, two in one. 
This corresponds with the law used in the beginning of creation, as above, so below, with the father symbolized by the number one and the first letter in the Hebrew alphabet, Aleph. By a reflection of himself, one plus one created the number two, marking the beginning of duality, the sun, the logos. Genesis 1 and 27, so God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. Wisdom of Solomon, for God created man to be immortal and made him to be an image of his own eternity. As I've explained in the cosmology of creation previously, the seed and the womb was with or part of the source, not separate, just as the single cell amoeba or the first man. The term man is not a sex in its truest sense. It is the race of humanity after the Atlantean and the Lumerian and before them the Gobian and more in the cycles before. This new race of humanity, man, which was originally two in one androgynous, split or created a reflection of itself. The androgynous race of man became man and a man with a womb, a wombed man. I'll say it again. Man is a race of humanity, not a particular sex. Do not confuse esoteric verbiage with literal meaning. The Bible only covers our present cycle. It does not cover the race of humanity that preceded us like the Atlanteans. And furthermore, Adam is not the beginning of creation or the progenitor of all races. Adam is the symbol used to describe the creation of a specific race of Hebrew people. Because the Bible is a book of the Hebrews, not all man. Furthermore, Adam is not a man in terms of sex. But that same race of copper-colored Hebrew people, both male and female, in our present cycle. Because again, the Bible only covers our present cycle. The true initiate must understand time. This split or reflection by the androgynous original man's physical vessel is the symbol of duality. Or the false sense of separation we face today or see in all things. And this we must bring into union. So for the purpose of this message, let's focus on the light emitted, which is the seed. The seed emitted into silence, which is the womb. And we can get a better understanding of the Visica Pisces. And as I said before, the race of man is man and woman. Woman is man with a womb. We, man and woman, in physical appearance, in terms of bodies, are the physical materialization of duality above. Let's prove it. Man in Latin is men. In Webster, type in M-E-N dash. One of the variants is menstruation. Why? Men don't menstruate. Let's get the etymology of the word men. It says moon. Now we understand the correlation of menstruation and moon. There is a monthly cycle that occurs within you, both man and woman. And that's the birthing of the celestial seed passed down from the father to you. And this was in the beginning. The seed. The fish, Hebrew letter Nun, Joshua of Nun, the name that was used to create the name Jesus, which has different levels of meaning, this one being the seed. It's all connected. Every month with this seed, you're given the opportunity to return to the image or the similitude of the Father, union, and the law was given to maintain this image. The source of most of our English words today stems from the original Hebrew language, using symbols and signs to create words or complete thoughts akin to the Egyptians. Let's use the same idea to find a true meaning and the root of the word man and woman. Man, M, Mem, water, womb, mother, A, Aleph, oxhead, strength, leader, father, N, noon, seed, fish, regeneration of man, N, this is the symbol of the seed, and remember, every month this seed is what creates the man into the image of God, or in our case is to return us into the image of God. So if you're not regenerating, it means there is a defect in your process of rebirth through the vesica Pisces. Now let's do womb, W, Sadi, man on the side or trail, correct path, desire, earthly man, O, I, N, I, experience, no, watch, duality of power, M, Mem, Water, womb, mother, B, bet, house, family. Now, woman, W, Sadi, man on side or trail, correct path, desire, earthly man, O, iron, I, experience, no, watch, duality of power, M, mem, water, womb, mother, A, Aleph, 
ox head, strength, leader, father, and noon, seed, fish, regeneration of man. Man is symbolized with the womb and mother because he has the regenerative seed of birth every month. He also embodies strength as he is the leader. Noon is the seed in his womb that is birthed every month for the process of regeneration. The womb describes the trail, the path or plane of desire of the earth man for the purpose of experience to know and to understand duality of power through imperfection in order to know perfection. The womb, the mother, the house, which houses the seed, the father's seed for celestial birth and also houses the seed for terrestrial birth, the babies, in terms of a physical woman. There are two processes going on with the womb. The physical man is part of only one process, the birthing of the seed. The physical woman is part of two processes, the birth of the seed and the physical life. Through the womb of the Vesica Pisces was created the eons, which contains the cosmos. Through the Vesica Pisces, the creator gods, through the will of the Most High God, created man in their image and similitude. The reason why the scripture says, let us create. Furthermore, God was translated from the word Elohim, meaning more than one God. It's plural. All creation, birth or rebirth through the womb, the Vesica Pisces, initiated from what the scriptures call the word. What is the word but a parable, a mystery, a hidden gnosis? Mark chapter 4, know ye not this parable? And how then will ye know all parables? The sower soweth the word. Luke 8 and 11. Now the hidden parable is this, the seed is the word of God. John 1 and 1, in the beginning was the word, which is the seed, and the word, which is the seed, was with God the Most High, and the word, the seed, was God. Emerald Tablet, Tablet 9, seek ye the path to the word, and the power shall surely be thine. Through order ye shall find a way. Look in thy life for this order, balance and order thy life to quell the chaos and emotion, and thou shalt have order in thy life. Order brought forth from chaos will bring thee the word of the source, and will give ye power of the cycles, a perfected son from the source. Along with the food, the alcohol, the sex, look in your life for this order, balance all things that are out of harmony. This is the T in fast, transmutation. Order is light, the seed, and it repels chaos, the darkness, and through the Vesica Pisces, a new spiritual celestial birth.